this one real gold? Yeah. Really? Hey, what's up? So, around 1200 years before Jesus was born, there was a king here in Egypt. His name was Ramses II. And he is remembered today as the guy who built more things than anybody else. Two of those things that were built were the Abu Simbel temples. So that's where I am right now, at the very bottom of Egypt, where it borders with Sudan. Follow yeah, okay. Thanks. Abu Simbel, exactly, this is the name of this town. So this town is called Abu Simbel town. Mm -hmm. Abu means father, and Simbel just the name of the first man who came here in the ancient time. In mm -hmm. the front of you, this is Lake Nasser. So Lake Nasser is the biggest man-made lake in all of the world. It's created by the dam, the high dam in Aswan. Mm -hmm. So this lake is about 500 kilometers, 350 kilometers in Egypt and 150 kilometers border to Sudan. So this is the best place for fishing in all of Egypt, but there is a many, many crocodiles live inside, so it's forbidden to swim. There is a great temple and there is a smaller temple. The great temple, it was built by Ramses II for himself as a god. So Ramses, he built four statues only for himself and that of the great temple. And he built another temple near to his Temple, but just for his favorite wife, Queen Nefertari. Okay. Queen Nefertari exactly different than Nefertiti, the wife of Ignata. Nefertari, the wife of Ramses II. She was from Nubia, she was a very, very beautiful woman, and the king loved her so much. So this is the reason he built a smaller temple for her. And Nefertari, it means the most beautiful lady has come. Sir Ramses II, he was married about 68 times. 68, mother-in-law, he must be lucky, he must be strong. He had 120 boys and 83 girls, busy man. Maybe he's my great-great-great-grandfather, nobody knows. He ruled the Egypt for 67 <laughs> years. When he died, he was 94, and this was unusual in that time. Our two temples were discovered at the beginning of 19th century. Before that time, heaps of sand had hidden them from the view. In 1813, a traveler called Lodwing saw a large stone faces they seemed to be coming out of the sand. In 1817, the sand was taken away, then the temple and the statue appeared. It was discovered by Giovanni Belzoni, he was Italian. This is a short cut. Yep. But why did King Gomsi the Great choose the part of Nubia for have such a splendid temple? There is many different reasons, but the most important one, it was the gold. More than 80% of the gold in all of ancient Egypt came from this land, from Nubia. So maybe Ramses, he wanted to catch the Nubian gold in his hand. So the pharaohs called Nubia, Nebu. That's mean the land of the gold. Look at the lake. It's a huge lake. And this was the old location of the two temples. You know, these two temples and the mountain had been moved from the old place. The old place was just down below there, about 200 meters from this location now. And the middle beach of the old place, about 65 meters deep under the water. When the water of Lake Nasser covered all this area, our Egyptian government with UNESCO tried to save our two temples and cut it into big boxes and rebuilt it here. I mean, this is the original temple. Sorry, one thing. The relocation was how many miles? 200 meters back. Only 200 meters? Only 200 meters. And the middle beach of that place about 65 meters deep under the water. When the water of Lake Nasser covered all this area, our Egyptian government was UNESCO, tried to save our two temples and cut it into big boxes and rebuilt it here. I mean, this is the original temple. But all the mountain behind, this is an artificial mound. Man-made mound. They built a huge concrete dome here first to carry all the mountains and then they started to cut the original mountain from the original place piece by piece and rebuilt it here. The work it takes four years from 1964 until 1968 and it cost about 36 million dollars American in that time. The system here in Abu Simbel, it is not allowed to explain inside the gate of the temple. No guide can explain inside. So okay. the guides have to explain just on the outside gate, and then the guests have free time to see the two temples. Okay. And um, photographs, when you enter the temple, you can use only your mobile phone to take pictures of you. Okay. So this is the great temple. Okay, look at the facade of the great temple exactly. 
There are four great statues ornaments of the Sat of the Great Temple, all for Ramses, each one about 20 meters high. Mm -hmm. The second one destroyed by earthquake. It was happening in 27 BC. And there is many smaller statues between the legs or under the knees, this representing some of the members of royal family of Ramses the Great or royal children. And hold the name of this member of the royal family, they were written under the feet of the biggest statue in the cartouche. But look at the top, very tall. There is a row of baboons or monkeys. This is 24 monkeys representing 24 hours in the day. So they are welcoming and greeting the sun every morning. In the middle, above the gate of the temple, the statue of God Ra, the sun god. He is considered the leader of the goddess inside the temple. In each side of him, we can see Ramses he offering to him. When you enter to this temple, you are going to see there is two hall of pillars already inside. This is the first to hold, the high Bustai hall. We have eight big standing statues representing Ramses the second, who is shown here at a god Osiris, the god of underworld. This is the form of Osiris, looks like the mummy. Mm -hmm. Behind of these statues from the right and the left hand side, you are going to see many storage rooms inside. Of the storage rooms, it was used to preserve the offering objects. But hold the scene inside the first hall here, it's a fighting scene or military scenes. For the famous battle, it was called Kat. It was in Syria, between Ramses II and Katusili, the king of Syrian people in that time. Inside the temple, on the left-hand side wall, you are going to see three fighting scenes. Mm -hmm. This one, the first one, it's very famous. Look, Ramses is fighting with the chariots and he's pulling his bow and aiming a route to the enemy fort. Yeah. Look at this very well. Mm -hmm. We have something strange. We have two bulls, two armies, and four legs for one horse. It's considered the first animation of movement in all of the world. More action. Maybe this is the Egyptian coming from Walt Disney. Another one, Ramses is fighting with the two enemies in the same time. He wants to show his power. Yeah. After the famous battle have ended, Ramses is returning back home, an officer marching before him. His favorite line is beside him usually, and this is, looks like celebration. The last one for the war is representing the panorama of the battle. The panorama, there is more details. Soldiers, chariots, horses, slaves. And the slaves, they ask the mercy from the king, Ramses II. And this document, it's very important in our history because it's considered the first peace treaty in all of the world, or peace agreement, it was between Ramses II and Katusi. So listen, there is no winner in this battle. Yeah. But our ancient Egyptian document told us Ramses, he was the winner, of course. Okay. And the other document of Katusi, the other king, Syria, told us Katusi, he was the winner. So we have two big layers, there is no winner in this battle. Inside Inside the great temple, there is another hole. It's much smaller than the first hole. But hold the scene inside the second hole just for offering all the religion scenes. For example, on the pillars you can see Ramses, he's just offering to the gods. Mm -hmm. As I told you at the beginning, Ramses, he was married about 68 times. Yeah. And he had 120 boys and 83 girls. Here he still asked the fertility god to give him a of children again. So could you show me which one the fertility god here? more clear. This one. The man with the magic stick. It's called the Amun Min. He has one leg and one arm. Only. What's Unlucky his name? Man. Amun Min. Okay. Amun Min, the fertility god. This is the triad of Abu Simbel. Isis goddess of magic, like a mother. Ramses second son, Amun Min father. Offering table and Ramses second here again, but as a human. We have Ramses two times. First time represented as a god. Second time represented as a human. Different face. Ramses here, he just burning some incense and standing before the sacred book, which have been carried on the shoulders of the priests. Mm -hmm. That ancient Egyptians believed that the sacred boat carried the goddess to the underworld. They also believed that the sacred boat would carry the king also to the underworld. This is the most important part of our temple here, the holy of the holies or the sanctuary. Four sitting statues were cut in the room. This is Betah, god of Memphis, the first capital in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Amun Ra, god of Karnak Temple in Luxor. Which one the third one here do you think? Which king like himself so much? Ramses. Ramses. He put himself here as a god. And this is Ra, the sun god of this temple above the entrance. So the most important thing here, that the light of the sun entered to the sanctuary directly through the gate. This happened two times here. 22nd of February, 22nd of October, on the face of this three statues only. But they have no light of the sun. Why? Because he is considered the god of darkness. But why all of this happened two times here? Because the first day his birthday, another day his coronation day. When the temple was in the old place, it was happening in 21st of February, 21st of October. After moving the temple to the new location here, it became late one day. Why? Because they moved the temple from temple to up in the same line and the same angle. So we're going to talk about the temple for the queen, for Kari, 
okay. the favorite part of Ramsu II. Yep. And this one in the same time, it's dedicated to Goddess Hatur. Do you know Hatur? The cow goddess. Yep. Hatur, goddess of music, dancing, love, joy and fertility. It's a female goddess. There is two forms of Hatur. First form like head of women's, another form like cow. Mm -hmm. Six standing statues of the side of the temple. Four for Ramses and two only for the queen. I think maybe Ramses he like himself again. Ramses, Nefertari, Ramses. Mm -hmm. Ramses, Nefertari, Ramses. Wow, he like himself more than anyone. Yeah. And there is 12 smaller statues between their legs or under their knees. These representing the children between Ramses and Nefertari. So Nefertari, she had 12 children. She's a lucky woman. Ramses II, he was so proud by himself. He left some hieroglyphic letters outside this temple. He wanted to say, I built this temple into the mountain. Such work had never been attempted before. Mm -hmm. Inside the temple, there is only one hall of pillars. Look, six square columns seem to support the roof. Yeah. Hall the scene inside this temple just for offering, the legend scene. In the front part of each pillar, this is the face of women with two small ears for the cow. This is the, the form of goddess Hatur. And this is the beautiful lady, Queen Nefertari. She putting the crown of Hatur above her head. And this is the coronation picture for King Ramses himself. Ramses, he just standing in the middle. The queen got set and got Horus. They seem to giving him the crown. Mm -hmm. So, Sit, god of evil. Horus, god of good. Sit had a jackal head. Horus had a falcon head. Mm -hmm. And this is the coronation picture for Queen Nefertari. She's standing in the middle between goddess Hathor and the goddess Isis. They seem to giving her also the crown. But let me ask you, how can we know this is Hathor and this is Isis because they are both twins? How can we recognize them? No idea, man. The name, the cartouche, Hathor Nebet, has oh, her, yes. is his Isis. Yeah, okay. The last one of the smaller temple, we can see the statue of Hathor in the form of the cow, just standing in sacred boat between the lotus flowers and Nefertari, she's offering flowers to Hathor.